And welcome to the last day of 2023. Do you notice anything different? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bob Graham, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Chris, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I think I'd move farther away soon. Uh, yes, we have been very, very fortunate and blessed. Um, it's sad that the Congregational Church in Heart closed, but we were the recipients of several of their things, including the altar and um, the baptismal font. In the So it's just beautiful. So we, we will, I'm sure, have a dedication uh, as the days, as the weeks go on. Welcome to those that are here. It's great seeing your smiley faces today on this New Year's Eve morning. Welcome to those listening on the radio and also on our streaming service of BoxCast. And I will repeat it if you're ever in the area at this time at 9.15 at the blinker light in the <laughs> town of Mears. We'd love to have you come and join us and stay for fellowship of coffee and cookies and probably in January we start having soup so there will be a is a sign up sheet out there yet for soup not yet so okay we have soup covered for next week so um, uh, the sign up sheet will be out next week also next week we will if you have some time after church we will um, undecorate and um, seems kind of sad we have to undecorate but uh, it's that time of year the announcements have been scrolling, and for the week of, uh, of December 31st, upcoming Sundays. Next Sunday, January 7th, will be New Beginnings, and we will be studying the book of Mark, chapter 1 and verses 1 through 8. And the following week, Old Washed <laughs> Away in the New Beginnings, also from Mark 1, 9 through 11. And I believe uh, she's doing the book of Mark the whole year. Yes. Yeah. Ministry team meeting, Wednesday, January 10th at 10 a.m. The ministry team meetings will be going back to the second Wednesday of the month. Said it before I even saw it up there. UMW will meet on January 10th at 11.30 a.m. And um, somebody will provide lunch, and it's a get-together. UMW is United Men and Women. And we meet together, have lunch, and plan some things that we will do. We do a lot of visitations with some of the missions that we support. And I think, um, so that's what our meetings are about. January 20, 24, okay, we'll be going through the Gospel of Mark all year. Please let us know if you have an anniversary or a birthday any week so we can celebrate with you. Do we have any anniversaries this week of the first week of January or today? What about birthdays this first week? Nobody. And Pastor Bev is not here today, as you can see. Um, she was exposed to COVID, and so she thought best to not come in. So Denise Skydema will be talking with us today. And um, I guess that's all I need to know about you. We all know Denise. <laughs> <laughs> so and let's get started. Please stand for the call to worship. And as we do that, we will breathe in God's grace and exhale God's praise. Holy Lord, we come with joy to celebrate the birth of your son. Who rescued us from the darkness of sin by the lady of the cross of the of life and life. Praise God from whom all blessings. 
blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our opening hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful, and the words are on the screen because they're a little different from what they are in the book. So hopefully the screen works for us today, Kelsey. She's okay. <laughs> You may be seated. Let us pray. We have welcomed the Christ child and declared the glory of God's salvation that comes to live among us, and yet still we wait. We prepare to welcome a new year, thankful for how God has brought us through the past year and anxious to discover what the new year might bring. We joined generations of Simeons and Annas who leaned and taught us how to listen, notice, and discern divine love at work in the world. Come, let us worship God, whose love endures from generation to generation, guiding us from one year to the next. Amen. This is time for our God winks when people have um, prayer concerns. And our prayer concerns today for Pastor Bev and Harry, and hopefully they will get better soon. For the family, for the family of Kent Colson, who passed away when? The 26th. Oh, the 26th, the day after Christmas. Okay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Are there any others? I have a prayer concern. Like okay. We entered my mom and dad's hospital. You pardon? We entered my mother into Okay, Karen Olson's mother has been put into hospice here at the facility? It's still there, yeah. Okay. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers.
Bev Wood, who fell and broke her femur a few weeks or a couple weeks ago. She'll be entering up at the facility Tuesday, they thought. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. The people of Ukraine, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Do we have any good news? <laughs> we made it through another year. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise. <laughs> yes. I actually connected with some cousins biologically. In Ukraine? Uh, no, in oh, the United in the United States? Well, good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our praise. praise. Yes. Yes, after a week and a half of my ear hearing aid, this thing I found. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our praise. <laughs> you can hear, good. All right. Are there any other praises? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the joys that we have shared. Be with the ones who we have lifted up in prayers that need your guiding hand at this time. Be with those. Be with Pastor Harry and the family of Kent Colson. We ask this all in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And children's time. We don't have any children except we're all children of God. I understand you all had a wonderful Christmas. Huh? Well, Amory? Emery, do you want to come up? No, she doesn't want to come up. I was just going to ask you about your favorite Christmas present. A tablet. A tablet. Wow. What a good Christmas present. Yes. I like my tablet. Yes. I'm a Lego freak, and I had um, asked, Legos now have flowers. <laughs> So I got some Lego flowers, so I've been playing with my Legos, so it's been fun. It's been a good time. What? What's that? That's right. Hey, what's that? I won't grow up. I do get older, but I'm not going to grow up. So, Okay, uh, what do we have next here? Him of preparation, he is born, 228. Okay, you're going to need the hymnal because the computer just went down. Page 228. Sometimes.
And now please recite with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now Denise. Good morning. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be here with my nearest family. Um, and I'll just let you know that you know, Pastor Bev, when she called me, um, I had a few plans for yesterday, but then um, when we, were, we had a birthday party for my uh, six-year-old granddaughter, that, and they live in Allegan, and then so we were at the motel playing in the pool and stuff, and my son and his family, the six-year-old and a year old, um, he said, oh, by the way, we're spending the night tonight and we're, you know, we got to make sure we're watching ESPN so that we can watch that football game. So I was up with them um, entertaining <laughs> and watching the football game. So this message that I have, um, basically I pulled from um, the discipleships ministries which is a great reference for um, anybody that needs to step in at the last moment because it pretty much gives you everything you need. Um, so that's kind of what I have here. Um, so um, just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, a background on New Year's Eve. So the last time that New Year's Eve fell on a Sunday was in 2010. So... Can anybody guess when the next year it will be falling on another Sunday? No. 2028. So, yeah. I Don't ask me how. But I think it's that leap year that throws things off all the time. So, anyway, this year the calendar gives us the opportunity to gather for Sunday's worship on New Year's Eve. Though some communities particularly those in black church tradition, gather for New Year's Eve every year, and many other communities do not, even though historically New Year's Eve has held great significance for Methodists. Thus, this Sunday offers an excellent opportunity for churches that are not used to gathering, used to gathering in New Year's Eve to look into a piece of our heritage. Beginning in 1775 or 1755, John Wesley encouraged gathering for worship on New Year's Eve for a covenant renewal service. Central features for this service are remembering the past year, something of a communal examine, as well as recommitting to following Christ often using the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. So I thought maybe we would follow that together. And that can be, there we go, 
on the screen for you. So let us pray together. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be it thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. So then I wanted to show or share with you um, the, some thoughts on this, what they call it a watch night. And this is taken from, uh, her name is Darlene Moore, and it's from the African Worship Book. I remember as a little girl, we would go to church about 10 o'clock at night. We would pray, testify, sing, cry, shout, and dance. The preacher would preach. There would be lots of men, women, boys, and girls. As midnight neared, some older member, elder, would start praying. We would all get down, down on our knees, thanking God and asking for mercy. Then someone would ring the church bell. We heard the church bells, fireworks, and guns going off. Slowly, we would get off our knees and choruses of thank you, Lord, for letting me see another year would go out. We'd look around and wonder where all the men had gone. The women would whisper, they're out shooting those old guns. Lord have mercy. <laughs> So back in my earlier days, um, we had uh, a big family of friends that lived within my neighborhood in um, Middleville. And we lived out in the country, and we had lots of neighbors that would come over, and we had a hot tub, and we had a sauna, and we'd have a pretty big party. And then my one girlfriend that I'm still very good friends with, she said, okay, we're going to get out the pots and pans. So we got out the pots and pans after midnight and the wooden spoons, and we would go out no matter what kind of weather it was, because sometimes it's rainy like now, sometimes it'd be snowy, but we would do all of that banging on pots and pans and just ring in the new year with all that noise. And as many of you know, that is what happens a lot. People go out, they have a good dinner, they enjoy some good music, and they ring in the new year. Might not be at midnight. <laughs> I know I won't see midnight tonight. <laughs> but it is a day of celebration, an evening of celebration to enjoy yourself. So let's go on. Do, did we ever sing, Do You Hear What I Hear? Okay. Did you sing that song this Christmas season? We did. You should have, and you still have time. And here on this threshold of a new year, it might be the best time to be a listener, to tune into the music that is playing around us all the time. The music of the spheres, the music of heaven or of heaven creation itself. Do you hear it? So this is going on. This is a gentleman that wrote this. I was given the gift of the appreciation of musical ability. Yeah, that means I can't play any instrument. But I can listen. And I can appreciate those who can. One I used to listen to was my little brother. 
He could play piano like it was a part of him. I'm sure many of you have seen or heard musicians like that. I know he would say he hasn't kept up with it and isn't as good at it as it as he was, and I wouldn't argue with him. I know it takes practice to be good, but I never saw him practice. I just saw him play. I mean, it never seemed like it was hard, like he was straining or struggling or working at it, though I know he was. But it never looked like it and rarely sounded like it. He just played. He practiced playing and I practiced listening. Listening doesn't get you many admirers, not like playing does. Yet, it is essential for the life of the spirit. This Sunday after Christmas, or watch night service, we get to hear the story of a professional listener, a man who dedicated his life to listening. And then when the time came, he played. He sang the song he'd been listening for. He sat down to play the tune he learned by ear. Long story, but he read it all the way through. Don't skip on Simeon's story, and don't leave out Anna. We need them. We needed to listen for a while. We need to catch the tune, to follow the rhythms. Simeon learned how to listen. His name means heard, believe it or not. It was what he was born to do, so he did. He listened. Day and night, he listened. He was listening for the future. He was listening for hope, the consolation of Israel, Luke tells us. He was listening for that which would, be, would bring peace, that which would bring light. He listened. Day after day, he went to the temple to listen. He heard the cries of the people. He heard the songs of the loud, happy, celebratory prayers that seemed to bra so brash, but good-hearted anyway. We, he heard the ritual prayers, spoken sometimes as though they had lost their meaning, and sometimes as though the meaning was so deep it resonated through the souls of those who prayed. He heard the wordless prayers that were wept from swollen and reddened eyes, wrung out of twisted scraps of cloth between hands gnarled with pain and fear. He heard the proud and grateful prayers of people who knew how blessed they were. He heard them and wept and laughed with them. He heard them all. But he heard more because he listened deeper. He heard the responses. He heard the sighs of the spirit as it flowed like whiffs of comfort into the hearts of the hopeless and broken. He heard the soothing song of blessings as it preyed on the hearts less in tune than his, but aware nonetheless somehow. He heard the invitation of the God he loved to follow, to obey, to keep close and stay awake, to watch and listen. He heard the commandment not as a hammer on a cymbal, but as a finger plucking a string. He heard somehow, he heard. Then that day, he heard the music shift into a higher key a note of anticipation fulfilled, a baton pointed, a new singer taking the stage, and he followed the director's gaze and welcomed the one who comes. Then Simeon, who lived a life of listening, became a teacher of the song he knew. He sang into the hearts of those who came caring more than they knew. His song was a gift to the church called the Nunc Nimitus. 
from the words of the song in Latin, not let your servant depart in peace. We've always thought that he was saying it was time to die because Luke told us that Simeon was promised that he wouldn't die until he heard what he was listening for. But maybe he was simply saying, I'm not done listening. I've heard all I need to hear. I've heard the voice of the one who sings the song of salvation, who chants the chorus of redemption. My ears are full. He may be done listening, but he isn't done singing. He has to teach the song to those who will sing it. And his colleague, Anna, who teaches it to all of us who are around them, running from one to another to make sure they sing. You can't stand silent in this worship service. You can't have closed lips to this hymn. Doesn't matter whether you think you can sing or not. We need to, to, to learn the tune, the falling and the rising, the major and the minor key, that which makes us smile, that which evokes a tear. We need to sing. Might as well, our inner thoughts are revealed anyway. Simeon says so. And he ought to know. He's been listening to those inner thoughts his whole life. And now he sings the song he learned by ear. It takes to time to learn to listen, but it's worth the effort. The spirit rested on Simeon, Luke says, rested. Not stirred up, not agitated or poked or prodded, but rested. Maybe if we listen more to the Spirit, the voice of God, we might now rest like Jesus promised. But we can also learn to sing, to play by ear. Paul learned that song, and he sang it every chance he got. He sang it in the fourth chapter of Galatians. He sang about God sending the Son about redemption and adoption. He sang to us as children with the spirit in our hearts crying, Abba. He sang to us as those set free, as heirs of the promise. It was one of his favorites, a greatest hit he sang again and again. Isaiah sang the song too. His song is a fashion song garments of salvation, and robes of righteousness. We look as if we're going to a wedding. We look like a garden full of bloom. We look like a chorus of praise singing in the heavenly choir, serenading the whole world. When Isaiah says, sing, he, we can't keep silent. Sing until everyone notices. Sing until everyone hears. And what they need to hear is not us, not our song, but the composer, the conductor, the source of our music. The beauty of the proclamation of our lives is a pointer of the ongoing presence of the God for whom we sing. Will we sing into a new year? Will we commit to be being the signs of God's presence at work in our world. I am no longer my own, but yours. We pray the Wesleyan's Wesley Covenant Prayer. We, get, we ask God to assign our parts, to rehearse us, to direct us, so that we can be the choir that is needed in the, this awful time. And maybe some of us, will be assigned as listeners, like Simeon. Our proclamation will be the tear of joy that rolls down our face when we hear the music of the one who comes. Praise be to God, now and forever. Now, 
I'd like to us to all join in Go Tell It on the Mountain. Um, I think we're going to have to get out the hymnals for this because I forgot to tell you, Chelsea. Sorry. <laughs> 251. This is my favorite hymn of all time. Better get the <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that's okay. Is this the our benediction. Is it a musical one? Mm hmm Which one is it? 170. This one? Yes, that one. <laughs> That's right. Okay. How to get into it. Okay. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet again. Till we meet again in 2024. Happy New Year. So I